Hello everyone, today I'll be narrating three new creepy posts that I found off of the Let's Not Meet subreddit. Liking this video and subscribing to my channel helps me a lot. After you've heard these stories, let me know what you think of them in the comments below. But without further ado, let's dive straight into their experiences. These are their stories. This happened way back in October of 2006. At the time, I was just a 19-year-old kid always on the lookout for adventure. One Friday night after wrapping up a shift at McDonald's, I met up with some of my friends who suggested we check out this haunted location called White's Bridge. My one buddy Brendan said he had recently learned about it and began telling us the legends associated with the 100-year-old wood-covered bridge. Never wanted to turn down a spooky experience, we all piled into my green Ford Taurus and headed out on our journey. Brandon gave directions, guiding me off the main road and within minutes we were on the dirt back roads, surrounded by woods and cornfields. Our only point of reference was a blinking cell tower off in the distance. We could tell we were getting further from the city as our cell phones began slowly losing service. As we rode deeper and deeper into what legitimately felt like the absolute middle of nowhere, Brandon repeated the legend associated with the bridge. Back in the early 1900s, a local farmer discovered that his beloved wife had been cheating on him, and in a fit of rage he killed her and her lover after discovering them in the act. After committing the cold-blooded murder, the farmer left his home and wandered the dirt roads into days. He eventually came upon White's Bridge where the realization of what he had done finally began to sink in, and deciding he would rather die than face the consequences of his actions, he hoisted a rope up and over one of the bridge's rafters and hung himself. As far as I could tell now, the story is complete fiction, but we totally believed it at the time. After a long and bumpy ride, Brandon instructed me to turn right on an off-road I wouldn't have even noticed was there had he not pointed it out. I took the turn and there before us was White's Bridge. It looked like something straight out of a horror film, an old wood-covered bridge, aged by time, sitting alone above a river deep in the middle of nowhere. We parked the car on the side of the road and got out to explore. Immediately catching our eyes was a scarecrow line abandoned at the entrance to the bridge. My friend Mike, who was known as somewhat of a risk taker, and a stupid one at that, picked up the scarecrow and lit it on fire. The hay body burst up into a ball of flames and Mike waved it around proudly next to the old dry wood bridge. Realizing the risk, I told him to throw the thing in the river and put it out, which thankfully he did. After making sure there weren't any rogue embers that could ignite the bridge, Brandon suggested we get back in the car and pull it onto the bridge. He explained that the legend was that if you parked your car in the middle of the bridge, put it in neutral and killed the engine, the spirit of the dead farmer would push the vehicle forward to get it off the bridge. Naturally, we had to try this. We piled back in and did exactly as he said. We parked halfway across the rickety old bridge and killed the engine. We sat in the pitch black, saying nothing, waiting for something, anything to happen. The only sounds were the creaking of the bridge, the river flowing beneath us, and footsteps? Suddenly, the back driver's side door opens and a woman abruptly enters the back seat, cramming in next to my two friends back there. She looked to be in her late 20s slash early 30s, long straight black hair, slim, and wearing a plaid shirt and blue jeans. It's been a while but this is essentially how I remember the conversation going. I saw your fire signal for me, she said. Uh, wait, what? I replied, totally freaked out and at a complete loss of words. I'm so glad you came. My boyfriend's car broke down down that way. I need a ride back. My brain was doing its best to compute the situation. I'm sorry, but who are you? I asked. What are you doing out here? I told you. She responded curtly. My boyfriend's car broke down over there. Can you please just give me a ride so I don't have to walk all the way back? She was pointing ahead, towards a narrow road that forked off to the right on the other side of the bridge. My friend Mike, the scarecrow burner, and ever the gentleman added, I mean, if you need a place to stay, you're more than welcome to come crash in my place. I got plenty to drink and I interrupted him. No, lady, listen, I'm sorry. I don't know who you are. You just got in my car and this is all really weird. I'm sorry, but you have to get out. She glared at me in the rearview mirror. If looks could kill, I would have been done for, but you signaled for me. She responded in an irritated tone. We weren't signaling for you. Get out. She let out an angry sigh and got out, walking back in the direction from which she came and disappearing into the night. I started the engine right up and looked at my friends. They all had looks of disbelief on their face. Without saying a word, I put the car in drive and slowly rolled forward and off the bridge. We needed to turn around and go back across the bridge to get to where we had come from, and the only way to do that was to pull onto the side road that the woman said her boyfriend's car had broken down on, and then reverse. As I pulled onto the side road, my headlights illuminated the three posted signs that I hadn't been able to see from the bridge. No trespassing, private property, and do not enter. Looking up the road, there was no sign of the woman. Wherever she went, it didn't appear she went that way. I didn't want to stick around though, so I backed up and crossed the bridge again, and from there began the journey home. We didn't have much to say on the ride home. I think we were all equally stunned, except for Mike, who asked if he knew anyone that would be awake at the hour that he could score some weed from. I visited White's Bridge a couple other times after that, but nothing of no happened in my subsequent visits. 
Sadly, some people burned down the old White's Bridge some years ago. It was rebuilt, but from what I hear, it's just not the same as the original. I don't have any plans to go and check it out. To the strange lady who entered my car out in the middle of nowhere at 2am, let's not meet. This happened in 2019. I was in my second year of college and living in a town home about a 10 minute walk from campus. I lived with two other girls at the time but they were all back at their parents house for the holiday. I work in healthcare and was working Christmas this year. A little bit of backstory, there used to be four of us living there but one girl had moved out due to issues with her boyfriend. He was a jerk who abused our kindness and allowing him to stay there, was only supposed to come every so often but basically ended up living there. We told her she needed to kick him out after an incident with him one night after he got physical with her and verbally abusive with the rest of us. She wouldn't listen and we told her we would have to talk to the landlord then. Long story short, she ended up moving out and left on bad terms with us. At this point, it was affecting everyone and we didn't feel safe with him there, etc. so she moved out. Okay, so back to the story. It was Christmas Eve and I worked the next day so I was getting ready for bed, locked the doors, turned the lights off, and went downstairs where my bedroom is. I was scrolling on my phone for about an hour, it was Christmas day at this point, when I heard what sounded like the chairs in the kitchen move. The kitchen is right above my bedroom. I thought maybe I was hearing the neighbors next door as we share the same walls and sometimes they could be loud, but I remembered one of them texting me and asking me to bring in a package they were expecting while they were all gone at home. The noise was short lived so I brushed it off. Next thing I know, my bedroom door is being opened slowly, but my phone screen is lighting up my scared jaw drop face, so I can't act like I'm asleep where I'm laying in bed faces directly to the door, so we're just looking right at each other. So there I was laying in my bed while this guy has one foot in my bedroom with the door cracked open. It felt like an eternity, but in reality it was probably more than like 10 seconds of us looking at one another. He slowly takes his foot out and closes my door. I sit there just in complete utter shock. I couldn't make out what he looked like as my eyes were adjusting to the dark again from the phone screen. All I could see was a backwards baseball cap. I knew I had to call the police, but my anxious self knew if I called, it would alert my parents' phones that I called. Me being dumb, I was like, well, I don't want to make them worry. Also, I was scared he might still be somewhere in the house, and I didn't know what he would do if he heard me call. So I text the guy I was seeing at the time and tell him, some random guy just broke into my house and came into my room. He snapped me out of it and told me to call the police, and so I did. The dispatcher asked me if I felt comfortable to go unlock the front door for them so they didn't have to break it down, and I told her no way, I don't care if the door is broken, I'm not going up there alone. A couple minutes later I see flashlights shining through my window. I hear the police knocking at the door and announcing themselves. They got in and asked me where I was. I came out of my room and they came and got me. They told me to wait on the back porch while two of them searched the house and one stayed with me. They didn't find anyone and I said nothing looked like it had been taken. They even tried to get fingerprints but were unsuccessful. They then started asking me questions and informed me that the back door was unlocked and had no signs it had been broken. I told them I had locked it. Luckily the guy I was talking to stayed with me that night but I still couldn't sleep. I kept having to go check every inch of the house over and over. I placed chairs under the door handles on the front door, back door, and my bedroom. The next day I informed our landlord and she refused to come out and change the locks, and she never ended up changing them for the rest of the time we lived there. Every time I go to bed now, I triple check all the doors have been locked, doesn't matter where I am. I have a dog now and he helps my anxiety of intruders, as well as a recent purchase of a ring doorbell. I believe it was our old roommate's boyfriend. I think they may have made an extra key for him because he was basically living there, but I don't understand why he didn't do anything to me, the house, or our belongings. If it were someone random, I don't know why they wouldn't have done what they intended and that could be many different possibilities. I don't know what their intentions were that night, but to the man who broke into my house on Christmas Eve, let's not meet again. Over the summer, me, my fiance, and my stepdaughter, then two years old, went on a vacation to Presque Isle in Pennsylvania. We stayed there throughout the afternoon and decided to get dinner in a nearby town, Erie, Pennsylvania. We go there and see a water fountain that kids play in. We think our kid would like that, so we get food and take her there. Now, it was kind of a pretty sketchy area, but there were also kids and it was still a little light out, like 6.30, 7pm-ish. Me and my fiance sit down and watch our kid play for a bit. At some points, our kid wants me to run in the water with her, so I do. I kind of keep going back and forth between playing with her and keeping my fiance company. After playing with my kid for a while, I come back to my fiance. She looked kind of pale and said, go get our kid, we need to leave right now. I didn't know what was going on, but I got my kid. As I was turning to go back and get her, I noticed a group of about three really weird guys staring intently at us. 
When I looked over, one of them stood up a little bit and was giving me a stare. I grab up her kid and start following my fiance who was booking it. As we were walking away, she tells me that somebody is following us now. I look over and see the creepy looking, shirtless dude getting into his old, beige sedan behind us. My fiance explains to me that the same man kept approaching her whenever I would get up to run around with her kid. At first, he introduced himself and tried talking to her. She thought he was being benign but just trying to hit on her. When I came back, he apparently bolted. I sat with her for a couple of minutes and then went back to play with her kid. Apparently, as soon as I went, he returned. He asked her if she was married to me. She said that we were going to be hoping that it was the end of that. He goes away before I came back to sit with her again. The third and final time I go to play with her kid, he apparently came back. He told her that she thought she was a beautiful lady and asked if that was her daughter, pointing to our kid. My fiance said yes and the guy said that our kid was also a beautiful lady and that his night was going to be made, whatever that means. Q and I come in and we book it. We're walking back to our car which is kind of far away. Erie in general was pretty abandoned outside of the park and we notice the car pull out and start driving extremely slowly in a street parallel to us. At this point, I don't think he knew we saw him. My fiance is freaking out and I tell her to wait near the vestibule of a closed Starbucks where we weren't in this guy's vision. We stayed there for about 5 minutes and I was watching the roads, not seeing anything. We continue walking but are still on high alert. I found my car parked outside of a McDonald's and we're now power walking to it holding our kid. I look behind and lo and behold the same beige car going at 3 miles per hour just barely inches out from the side street so I can see it. As my fiance and the kid are getting in, I turn around and stand at the back of the car and shoot this guy the death stare. After looking at his car for about 10 seconds solid, he peels out and speeds off past us nearly hitting me. Not sure what this guy's problem was, I assume that he wasn't tailing us for any good reason. Afterwards, I bring up the three guys that were staring at me. My fiance said that the pervert following us was sitting with them when he wasn't coming over to her and saying creepy stuff. Alright, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Let me know what you thought of these stories in the comments below. But as always, have a nice day.